Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, Gladbrook United Methodist Church family, friends, and neighbors. Uh, Pastor Gideon here uh, on Facebook uh, Live. I would like to uh, uh, be in fellowship with you. I would like to share my uh, meditation today. In addition to the letter that you have received from me, I would like to share my meditation this morning and it is from um, the book of Jeremiah and I am reading from uh, chapter 29 verses uh, 11 to 14. And uh, I would like to read it from the Tanakh version of uh, the scripture. This is uh, the work of uh, great Jewish scholars and I like uh, what they did because they retained uh, the Hebrew idioms and so we have a sense of what went into the mind of uh, the writer of uh, the book of Jeremiah. I would like to read that. For thus said the Lord, when Babylon 70 years are over, I will make note of you and I will fulfill to you my promise of favor to bring you back to this place. For I am mindful of the plans I have made concerning you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you hopeful future. When you call me and come and, 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 and pray to me, I will give heed to you. You will search for me and find me. If only you seek me wholeheartedly. I will be at hand for you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes, and I will gather from all the nations and from all the places to which I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back uh, to the place from which I have exiled you. The good Lord add his blessing as we listen uh, to uh, this uh, word of God. Amen. Uh, I would like to sing a song uh, and uh, I would say we would like because I have with me today my wonderful and beautiful wife and we will be singing the first song we would like to sing is Oh Lord You're Beautiful and it is from the faith we sing him uh, uh, number 2064 so if you know this song you sing it with me Sing it with us. Uh, oh Lord, you're beautiful. Hallelujah. 
on my table is a chess board. Last year I started playing chess with my two kids, Joshua and Ruthie. The first time it was easy for me to beat them. I even tricked them by just having three moves to still mate uh, the king. But now, because they learn so fast, it is getting harder and harder for me to beat them. They are learning so quickly. Gladbrook United Methodist Church family and friends and neighbors think about this. Chess is a game of endless possibilities based on second guessing. Playing depends on not only on how you would like to move your pieces, but even more on trying to anticipate, second guess what your opponent will do to counter your moves. Then you plan your strategy accordingly. If I move my knight here, and he moves his rook there, and I will move my bishop so as to take his knight if he doesn't move his queen to take my rook, and so on. In the meantime, your opponent is trying to second guess. Second guess what you are going to do. Likewise, you second guess what your opponent is going to do. When you finally make your move and your opponent makes his, the process that begins all over again. One player can never be sure what the other will do or exactly what will happen, no matter how well each knows the game or his opponent. Life is like that for so many people in this world. It is a life without certainty or a life of second guessing. With the lockdown that we are experiencing right now, we are going uh, we are going through what I call endless second guessing. And it is triggering a lot of uncertainties and anxieties. When will this lockdown end? Can I be infected with this virus? Will there be a medication? What kind of economic life will we have after this? And many more. But with God's gracious love and power, what remains to be just a game of endless possibilities based on second guessing. The voice of God will come and is coming with hope and certainty and with sure outcome. That is what I believe in my heart and in my mind. That is what I am hoping from our Lord. Remember brothers and sisters that the book of Jeremiah is reflective of and responsive to the historical crisis of the last days of Judah. Culminating in the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 587 BC. This crisis is the dominant and shaping event of the Old Testament. The voice of God came to the people of God through the voice of Jeremiah amid uncertainty. Now, let me read once again from the Tanakh translation and later on I'm going to read it from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, For thus says the Lord, For thus said the Lord, I should say, When people's 70 years are over, I will make note of you and I will fulfill to you my promise of favor to bring you back to this place. Now, in Hebrew, the word fulfilled means I will give a proper and right understanding and interpretation. So here it says, I will give proper and right interpretation and understanding to you my promise of favor to bring you back to this place. For I am mindful of the plans I have made concerning you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you hopeful future. When you call me, 
and come and pray to me, I will give heed to you. You will search for me and find me if only you seek me wholeheartedly. I will be at hand for you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes, and I will gather from all the nations and from all the places to which I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I have exiled you. Now, in the Revised Standard Version, it says, For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place for surely I know the plans I have for you says the Lord plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope then when you call upon me and come and pray to me I will hear you when you search for me you will find me if you seek me with all your heart now, when, when the Bible speaks of heart, it doesn't, it, the Bible is not speaking of this heart, but it is speaking of the whole person, lamb in Hebrew. And the picture that comes with that is a, is a shepherd staff, and then you have the, the nomadic tent, which is at the time uh, the center of, 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 of their uh, 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 family and, and, and prayer and study. Uh, and and uh, so, if you seek me with all your heart, with all your being, uh, with all your mind, with your strength, with your with your soul, with your with with your spirit, uh, with all your heart. Uh, verse fourteen says, "I will let you find," says the Lord, "and I will restore your fortunes." And gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Take note of the language of God, brothers and sisters. I am mindful of the plans I have made concerning you. In the New Revised Standard Version, it says, I know the plans. But after that, there is a call to faithfulness. God said, when you call me and come and pray to me, I will give heed to you. You will search for me, find and find me, if only you seek me wholeheartedly. With your whole heart. The point of Yahweh is very clear. Amid uncertainties, we can stand on God's on God's plans. Why? Because before God makes a move, while well, something is still just an idea in His mind, He can explore the endless possibilities without second guessing involved and be absolutely sure of the outcome. That's why if you read the Bible, you read there about who God is, that God is just and righteous and loving and merciful. It means that Every act and every word is spoken by God, emanated from what you call careful and thorough examination of God. That's why God's endless possibility is without second guessing. It is not based on second guessing. God can take an idea and turn it in every conceivable and inconceivable way and know exactly what will happen. The game is completely played out in God's mind before even he makes his first move. God never second guesses. You might probably Pause it. Pastor Gideon, people are getting sick, people are dying, and it seems God is not doing something about it. The economy is collapsing, and people is living in an uncertain, in uneconomic uncertainty. Friends, these sentiments only indicate the rumpus of our limit. The commotion of our limitation. When God moves, remember this, it is always for the benefit of the whole created order. 
And one thing that we need to remember is that God is not in the business of explaining everything. The God revealed in the scripture is not in the business of explaining everything. Our side of the covenant relationship is to trust Him and be faithful to Him. Or listen again to what Yahweh said on verse 11. For I am mindful of the plans I have made concerning you, declares the Lord. Plans for you or for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you hopeful future. In this time of uncertainty, your trust in Him and your faithfulness counts. It is invaluable, as this Latin dictum says, Natura nihil agit frustra, natura vincitir pariendo. Nature does nothing in vain. Nature can only be conquered through obedience. Church, God's plan is always perfect. And we can always stand on His promises. Take, for example, planet Earth. This is fear spinning on its axis 1,000 miles per hour and hurtling through the space at 27 miles, 27,000 miles per hour. If our planet were closer to the sun, we could not stand the heat. If we were farther away, we could not stand the cold. Our bodies thrive in the atmosphere consisting of 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. With less oxygen, we would be sluggish. And with more oxygen, we would eventually burn up. Then the 20, 23.5 degree tilt on the earth, of the earth on the axis gives the four seasons, breaking the monotony of climate with no chance. God's plan is always perfect. And we can always stand on His promises. Understanding God's plan for nature helps us to receive and embrace that He has a plan or plans for you and for me. And God is mindful of that. Take this to your heart. There is never a lost cause for God. There is never a lost cause for God. You might have heard it before. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. What we may see as chaos, God views as an opportunity. And the good thing about this is that God does not need to explain everything to us. So that while we are only expecting the whole created order, we are infinitely more value than the vastness of his space, which still reveals a plan and a purpose. You, 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 my friends, are of greater value than the chaos of this coronavirus. Remember what we sing in our faith as it is written in the book of hymnals. That part of the song, this is my father's word. Though the wrong seems oft, oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. Amen. I would like to invite you to pray with me. Pray for our nurses. Pray for our doctors. Pray for all medical, medical staff. Uh, the medical staffs working in the hospitals. Pray for, for those who are not well, those affected by the coronavirus. Pray for them. Pray for each family here in Gladbrook and beyond our space. Pray for our young kids. Pray for our elderly. Pray for them. Pray for world leaders that they will sit down together and say, this is the time for us to do something greater beyond 
our political aspirations. Pray for them. Pray for countries severely affected by this coronavirus. Pray for people who are worrying and are now in depression. Pray for them. Pray for our farmers. I have seen movements with, uh, of, of our farmers with their big combines. We have some members working on the field right now. Pray for them. I don't agree that our farmers are the back liners. They are both the front liners and at the same time they are the people that will be at the back because they want to make sure that we have some 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 food to put to put on to the table and we need to pray for them. Pray for their safety. They are working hard. Pray, pray for, for everyone. Pray for those uh, uh, affected by, uh, 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 by this uh, uh, coronavirus, especially those that uh, have lost their, uh, uh, their jobs. Pray for them. Pray for our church. Pray for uh, 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 the struggles of our church. But most significantly, pray for our own faithfulness to God. It is my prayer that God will always find us faithful in the midst of this uncertainty. How about join me in praying this prayer that Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. We would like to, to sing again with my wonderful and beautiful wife, uh, she is a steady partner in this time of uh, uncertainty, as she is always. And I would like to invite Jonalyn uh, and, and join me in singing this uh, wonderful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Uh, let's sing this one. Uh, this, the letter that, uh, that I uh, sent to you, uh, the companion hymn there is Great is Thy Faithfulness. So let's sing this hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Take care always. Amen and Amen.